tiny little micro mini skirt, big hoop earrings, like proper trash. And I just thought, if my daughter dressed like that, I'd f D A N G E R F I E L D Dangerfield. All right, there. Now there's a reason. I'm over this side of the screen, I'm going to put some information up there. If you don't know, the Edinburgh Fringe is the biggest comedy festival in the world. And uh, I was a stand-up comedian for 10 years. I had two massive sell-out shows at the Edinburgh Fringe. You couldn't get seats, all the standing room was taken up. I'd done pretty well, made a lot of good friends, made a lot of good contacts, but give it up in the end because what I did as a comedian wasn't going in the same direction as the Fringe. Now, the Fringe itself, well, this is where it gets its name from. In 1947, after the Second World War, they invented the, uh, the Edinburgh International Festival. And it was an idea to kind of, you know, get things going again after the Second World War. And uh, I think about eight theatre groups turned up uninvited, unlisted. You know, they weren't anything to do with the official festival, but they weren't chucked out. They performed on the fringe of the Edinburgh International Festival. And... That continued to happen and continued to grow, continued to grow, and until in 1958, the Edinburgh Fringe was actually made official with a central box office, a programme, and, a, and, a, and a, a, a constitution. And I'm just going to read a bit of the constitution, not the actual constitution, but um, its constitution was written in line with the ethos that brought these companies to Edinburgh back in 1947, that the society was to take no part in vetting the festival's programme. To this day, that policy remains at the core of our festival, and we're proud to include in our programme anyone with a story to tell and a venue willing to host them. Now, weirdly, this year, Complaints were made to a venue about an offensive act. I mean, the two shows I was talking about, one was called Sex Tourist. True story of me going to Thailand to be a sex tourist. Wasn't a lot of sex in it. I got on the methamphetamine and got myself a Glock. <laughs> but, you know. And the second one was called Sex with Children. And that child was me. It was a story of some of my... <laughs> <laughs> some of my earlier experiences on the planet. But agents that would come to see my shows and that would say to me, you ain't ever getting signed because at most people who do stand-up comedy, they haven't got a passion for stand-up comedy, they've got a passion for being famous. They want to be a celebrity. So agents sign them. Next thing is to get them on panel shows and so begins the ladder to being a TV presenter on something like, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. And comedians that I performed with back in the day are actually presenting that show and, and other ridiculous light entertainment that I wouldn't ever want anything to do with. Just going, mate saying that is rank or mate she doesn't want to talk to you anymore or mate you need to move away from her um i spoke to one of these agents the other day i won't say who she is but we keep in touch and she said to me she said it's all over she said the political correctness has just wrecked the fringe she said you know that the the days when you were performing were really the the start of the end <laughs> not not because of me but she said, you know, it's uh, the politics, the correct politics have taken over, unsurprisingly, because they're taking over everything else. Anyway, 
after I heard that this uh, comedian, they removed him. They removed him from the lineup because people complained he was offensive. I mean, just look how nuts it is. Banning, banning a comedian in the name of inclusivity. <laughs> this from the Telegraph. It, it, you know, it's the sickest joke. Of course it is. It, like everything else these people create, it makes absolutely no sense. Unless you want to wreck society and then it makes complete sense. And I just thought, well, why, why, don't other com why don't people complain to that venue about other comics? All of the comics on their list. Just, just collectivise. Email them. Oh, so-and-so is, is offensive. And then, what, will they ban them as well? Who's making these decisions? You know, next year, it will be the Edinburgh woke fringe. <laughs> if it isn't already. About 30 people today sent me this. The, uh, the best joke at the Edinburgh Fringe, as well as a few of the others that were like the top 10 or something. Now, I never told jokes as a comedian because, again, it's light entertainment. It's, it's not of this era. It's dull. You know, can you imagine going to watch a comedian tell jokes, like one-liners, puns, for an hour? <laughs> What do you call a man who... Uh, oh, gives me the auras. So, here we go. This is, uh, this is it. Each year, a panel of leading comedy critics... Decided by who? <laughs> Each year, a panel of people who, have, who consider themselves leading comedy critics spend hours watching hundreds of shows to find the most hilarious joke. This year, the prize went to Lorna Rose Treen with her one-liner. Now, wait for this. This is the winning joke of the Edinburgh Fringe, the biggest comedy festival in the world. The Edinburgh Fringe is bigger than the Edinburgh Festival. The, what it was originally the Fringe is now the centre. Everything else is just sort of, oh, yeah, that sort of goes on at the same time, but no one cares about it. And this is the funniest joke written by a leading com judged by leading comedy critics I started dating a zookeeper but it turned out he was a cheater now the thing is it's based on an old joke and they've got it wrong the original joke is don't play poker in the jungle there's too many cheaters which makes sense. It's still unfunny as hell, unless you're eight. But I started dating a zookeeper, you know, a human. But it turned out he was a cheater. Doesn't even make sense. So, okay. You know, when I think about great comics, you know, people who had a social function that wasn't light entertainment, which is just a distraction. You know, you're looking at Doug Stanhope, obviously, um, Chris Rock, Lenny Bruce, of course, Richard Pryor, basically raconteurs, storytellers, that's what i done. And now, now I heard that someone got banned because people thought they were offensive. And then when I see the winning joke and the also rans, it's over. The, the, the fringe, the Edinburgh fringe is rubbish. I only ever wrote one joke. I done stand up for 10 years. I never wrote anything down. Even my two sell-out Edinburgh shows, I improvised the first night based on, you know, stories I'd told before, but I sort of shaped them into a, a story arc that went over an hour. But the one joke I ever wrote down, not wrote down, but, you know, 
practised and thought, oh, I've written a joke, this was it. I live in Soho and when I come out of my house this morning, there was a, a girl there, she must have been, I don't know, 14, 13, and she was absolutely caked in makeup and she had like stripper heels on, you know, those platforms with the eight inch spikes, tiny little micro mini skirt, big hoop earrings, like proper trash. And I just thought, if my daughter dressed like that, I'd fuck her. Ta da! <laughs> Don't unsubscribe because of that. A thumbs up would be lovely. Ta da!